it's been a rough little little pat patch here. Hasn't it, it has been a rough patch. And, um, I agree. Uh, and so we want to do a show tonight that's uh, that you can just sit back and relax and have a have sort of a a nice comfortable Warm, evening. fuzzy kind of evening. <laughs> Auntie Ida and Uncle Cal, we're gonna That's we're gonna right. read you stories. We're gonna we're gonna tell you nice we're gonna tell you nice things. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go through some uplifting stories with you this week, and uh, there'll be less interaction as a result um, because uh, uh, because it'll mostly just be us uh, pushing some stories out. So, but, but we want to hear back from you. Like if if it triggers a thought from you, we want to hear your thoughts too. Sure, so. but but also you can just relax, put on your headphones or your your earbuds or whatever and just just uh, close your eyes and listen to the listen to your voice change like listen to the <laughs> melodic tones of Cal and Ida we had social distancing that made trick-or-treating difficult and you know in our family we weren't quite sure how to hand out candy and Linda really took the responsibility for it I didn't even do it she sat at the door with the dog and Sayla just sat <laughs> and looked at the door waiting ready. for the next person Linda sat on the steps and handed out candy for people that came up and uh but I've known people in the past who just take like a bowl, of, like they go out for the night and they just take a bowl of candy and set it out in front of their door, right. maybe with some decorations mm -hmm. or something like that. And then people come and take themselves, take, take, help themselves to it. And usually that works. Like yeah. usually people don't come and take handfuls, although occasionally you hear stories about <laughs> well. people taking the whole bowl or whatever. Um, but so a lot of people actually did that this year. Just put the bowl out. Just put the bowl out mm -hmm. and let people. So uh, I want to show you a ring video of somebody's uh, trick-or-treat bowl out oh, in front okay. of their door okay so here it goes so it's no no words or sound it's just uh, just gonna be this uh, this one minute uh, it's 42 second video okay here okay. take a look at this so there they are and there's the bowl come up and get their candy right mm hmm so far so good except the bowl's empty now oh. Oh. oh look at that the kids from the neighborhood they were they were neighbor you know like a few like a few uh -huh. doors down so they're replenishing it <laughs> and they just put them all in there oh how nice is that isn't that a good one? It is a good one. <laughs> that is kind-hearted kids, really. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when when we were starting to do this, Cal was giving giving me an example of one that he had found, and I was sitting here crying when <laughs> he was reading it to me. I, I'm the biggest softie that God ever put on the earth. So, so for those I'll of you, if, in if anybody's watching and uh, and is visually impaired, just what happened was a kid came up and took the last piece of candy, and then another kid came up and he looked in. Uh, and there was nothing left, so then he just turned around and walked back out. And then his friend came up, and they stood out there and talked, like, like just for a brief second. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around, and they brought their candy bags up to the bowl and started reaching in and just putting That's their so candy sweet. into the bowl. That's sweet. And, uh, and then they, you know, they le it looks like they left maybe 20, 20 or 30 pieces in the bowl. <laughs> That'll last a while. So, yeah. So, the, yeah. so they, they, wanted, uh, they, they didn't want other people to have to come to the bowl and have it be empty. Well, that's really nice. Quite a good one, isn't oh, it? So mine is about uh, kindness at the car wash. So um, it says, we're just a car wash, so we have to assume that this customer who's moving away wrote notes like this to multiple local businesses, and she also brought donuts. And the note said, thanks for taking such good care of our cars over the past couple of years. We could always count on you to ensure our cars were clean inside and out. We're going to miss you guys and your hospitality. Thanks again. P.S. Great work during the pandemic. And to me, I know that sounds like such a small thing, but it's such an easy thing for people to do. Just, just a simple thank you goes a very long way. Um, so yeah, so that one touched my heart. I, I, uh, I also have a little story because I, uh, I decided after the last, uh, I forget how many years ago, it was many years ago because I was still in college and we were doing, I was setting the Thanksgiving table. And I was putting the knife and the spoon and the fork on the other side. And I was, I was wondering how I remembered how to do that. Yeah. So I remembered who taught me that it was my brownie leaders when I was a brownie. 
So I sat down that night and wrote thank you notes to all my Brownie Aww. and Girl Scout leaders. And you would have thought I gave them each a million dollars because I remembered their names. I remembered what they taught me. And, and it meant a lot. So I never take a, a thank you note uh, lightly at all. So thank you. And thank you for being here, too. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So there was a couple in Australia. These stories are, I mean, we've searched the world yeah. over. Uh, we've traveled, basically, <laughs> all over the Australia. world uh -huh. to speak with people. Okay. <laughs> so you the, may have. <laughs> so there was a couple in Australia, and they bought a caravan, which is a, a, a type of a camper. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, like an RV. It's a small pull-behind okay. camper. They might have them. They might have, uh, they, maybe they have engines. Uh, some of them have engines, too, but most of them are just sort of a smaller, you know, budget sort of camper um trailer and uh um it was small but it had a lot of features including a main bed and a bunk bed in it so it was a good you know it was, oh. it was really crammed in but it was a good you uh -huh. know good size good size one uh, when they went on their first trip they found a note and so i want to uh i want to show you all the note uh and i'll, I'll read it to you but okay. there's a picture of the inside of the caravan that's, where it says, since, since it's sort of small, maybe you, know, maybe you can't see it. But here's mm -hmm. what it says. It says, hi, my name is Poppy, and I'm 10 years old. Hmm. This used to be our caravan, and we traveled half of Australia in it. This was my bed, the top bunk, and it was very good. This drawer, which is where you found this letter, was where I kept all my special things that I couldn't leave behind when we went traveling. I hope that you enjoy this caravan very much. I'm in grade five and I'm very good at art. I have a message for you. Follow your dreams. And if you have the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. Oh. Enjoy this caravan. 10 years old. <laughs> okay. Somebody did something very right with that child. <laughs> and see, she, she left her uh, bracelet. Aww. There with the note in the, in the drawer. I have another one. Okay. It's called Looking Ahead. When I was a young boy, our whole family lived in my Nana's old house right beside a set of railroad tracks. I can remember the whole house would shake when the trains rolled by. These trains hauling coal cars were few and far between. However, so often I spent my summer afternoons walking down the tracks. I can remember the first time I tried to balance myself and walk on a single rail. The steel rails were very narrow and quite slippery, so I didn't have much success. First, I tried holding my arms out and watching my feet as I walked. They only led me to wobbling and falling after, falling after a few steps. I decided to walk backwards once, but quickly slipped off and skinned my ankle on the rail. It was only when I started looking ahead, down the length of the railroad tracks, that I was able to walk the rails. Keeping my eyes forward, I put one foot in front of the other, and I was soon walking with ease. Looking back on this time, I now realize that it also gave me a wonderful reason about a lesson about le wait. Looking back on this time, I now realize that it also gave me a wonderful lesson about living. You can't go through life watching and fretting about every step you take or choice you make. This only leads to second guessing yourself, and you soon go off the rails. Looking behind you is even worse. With your eyes on the past, you can't see the way ahead. You can only stand still and stay stuck in your regrets. It's only when you look ahead that you can really move forward. In his, it is only when you look ahead that you can see the life you want to lead, the love you want to share, and the light you want to shine. Then each step you take and choice you make is filled with love, and you'll walk on, the, on, on with a light heart. We need all to keep our eyes forward. We all need to look ahead with love. We all need to see with our hearts the life we want to live. We all need to take each other's hands and walk the path of love together, knowing that God is by our side with each step we take. Uh, so I want to show you, uh, uh, tell you a Wick baby story. A Wick? Yeah. Do you, oh, do you know Wick? Women, infants, and children. Yeah, women. But, it's yeah. a it's a U.S. Department of Agricultural program mm -hmm. where. Uh, let me see here. I wrote. Uh, it's a food and nutrition service for the Department of Agriculture that they that they provide for, and it's women, infants, and children, WIC, yeah. uh, to provide it. 
And uh, the, the, I looked it up and it says, the WIC program aims to safeguard the health of low income women, infants and children up to age five who are at nutrition risk by providing nutritious foods to supplement diets, information on healthy eating and referrals to healthcare. So that's what they do. Um, one of the WIC participants posted a, uh, a picture um, on Reddit with a short, with a brief uh, message about it. So here, I'll read it to you. So here's the picture, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I found this in a can of formula I opened today, she wrote. I picked it up with Wick about a week ago and opened four cans in the bunch before this one. Thank you, kind stranger. It is truly needed and appreciated. Oh, <laughs> that is so sweet. Isn't that neat? It so is. it's a $20 it's a, bill. It's a great idea, uh, too. Like when you're taking <laughs> things somebody to the put inside the, you know, the little plastic cover that goes over the part that you peel back when you, when right. you vacuum, the vacuum sealed part. Mm -hmm. So somebody just peeled it back for a little $20 uh, idea love it. in there. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> So uh, how about the next one, Ida? Okay, this one's called Identity. Uh, and it's written by a twin, but this could be by any sibling, really. I shared my identity with a twin. Until about nine years old, my name was Twinny, and so was hers. My name was frequently her name when someone thought I was her, usually followed by, oh, wrong one. <laughs> Every once in a while, I was called my name. Someone would look at me, and lo and behold, would see me. But I knew how difficult it was for my siblings, friends, and teachers to correctly identify us. Once in a movie theater, I had a nice chat with my twin sister, only to be tapped on one shoulder by a friend and to be told I was like a talking wall-sized mirror. To look identical to another person and to sound exactly the same, however, is not to be identical. We each have a heart that burns within us whenever we love deeply or grieve desperately. We have eyes that twinkle in laughter, arms that rush to hold those who are weaker, knees that bend in gratitude, but no two people do any of that the same way. Each person touches another in a spectacular and unique way, and each grows stronger in that meeting. I have always treasured the gift of being seen and recognized, and I want to give that gift to every person I meet. So simple. It's another visual only story. So, uh, so give this one a watch and see what you see what you think about it. It's called um, troubles. Let's see if I wrote anything. When troubles come, it's tough to be alone. It's like beans or something. I was going to say, what is that he's yeah. scooping up? <laughs> Lots of goodness in this world, isn't there? <laughs> isn't that fun? <laughs> oh, and they cleaned up all the beans. But it wasn't just one friend. No, it's like it just a, whole a group bunch of people, people from all over the place. And maybe even strangers that just were driving by. Yeah. That's really well, the, cool. a couple of them stopped their cars. Mm -hmm. and, and then they're off. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> there you go. All right, how about another story? This one, this one you told me is called Kind of Cool. I haven't heard any of these stories, so... <laughs> Okay, mine is, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to think that someone somewhere is having the best day of their life today. Someone's hearing I love you for the first time today. Someone's going to get the job of their dreams today. Someone received some kind of good news today. Tomorrow it could be your best day ever. So keep going. So we just have one more left. Hmm. Is that right? Have you done all yours? I did. You Recently in New Hampshire, a... Uh, an Uber driver recorded a video um, to show that uh, Uber drivers listen. So here's the uh, here's the video. Hello, hi Diane. Hi. You remember me, Diane? Yes, I think so, honey. I, right now, I don't know. I probably do. Diane. So this morning, I gave you an Uber ride to work. 
Oh, yes, and we did. had a conversation earlier. Yes, yes, we did. And you said that you was waiting for Christmas so that you can get house shoes and yeah. and some other stuff, right? Yeah. All right. So you don't gotta wait till Christmas, okay? So I bought you a dress. Oh my God. Here's the dress. Oh, because you, you so said much, you needed honey. something to wear to church. Those are probably the people behind me. Oh, <laughs> but that's your dress, so you can wear it to church. Oh, if you're you, so sweet. If you don't like it, the gift receipt is in there. It's from Old Navy. And then here's a $50 Visa gift card. So oh you can God. take that and get your house shoes and your robe when it's time, okay? Thank you so much. This has been such a horrible day. You just made my whole day so much better. You're okay. very I'm sure that you all have touching stories that you could share too that, uh, that kind of brighten your heart when you hear them. That's what we wanted to do tonight. We wanted to just, there's so much ugly news out there and controversy and... Uh, whatever it is whatever it is there's a lot of depressing stuff out there so we just wanted to take a few minutes and do something uplifting we are